Now I want to talk about um, medical evidence that's used in asylum seeking cases because actually there's been lots of concerns about this from lots of organisations but certainly members of parliament have also raised this quite significantly. Um, in 49 of the 50 cases, so practically 98%, um, case workers replaced expert opinion of the clinician with their own subjective opinion on clinical matters. My question is that there's no clear timetable for delivery of new training materials on using clinical judgments in cases of torture. Can you tell us what the timeline actually is? I don't have that with me. I don't Sorry. have that here, no. I'll have to come back to you with that. Yeah. Right, OK. Um, in addition to that, how will the Home Office monitor the impact of that training on the quality of decision making going forward? So I, I don't have the background information, I'm afraid, but I'm very happy to look into that and report back to you. I mean, I have to say that does really concern me, given, yeah. given the level of concern uh, being presented by members of Parliament. This is not a new issue, um, and it's been raised, as I understand, on numerous occasions. Um, and, um, so what, when, what do you mean by that, when you, as you understand it on numerous occasions? It's not been raised with me. Well, I think members of Parliament have, have been raising it. I mean, um, we, we, the Chair actually has received over 80 uh, letters from members of Parliament raising the issue on behalf of their constituents. So this is something well, that's been regularly reported to the Home Office. Well, I, I, I mean, I will look at I will, I'm very happy to have a look at this and come back to you on that. Um, but this is not an issue that anybody's raised directly with me. But that doesn't mean it shouldn't be dealt with, so I will... Um, yeah, I, I think I think there's been lots of uh, lobbying as well from freedom from torture uh, organisations like that as well, who've raised this issue. And I think it's really important that we, um, if you could provide us with a the timeline, but e how that process of reviewing and understanding the impact it's having in terms of decision making going forward, um, I think would be really really welcome. Oh yeah, and it's I mean it's absolutely clear. When we if we're bringing in. Um, in any system that we are using around making sure that we have got the best interest in an injury with a case, particularly people who are some of the most vulnerable people in the world, which um, people who have been through this kind of situation will be, that when we bring something in, we are very, very clear, and I am very determined that we make sure that what we've got is appropriate, that it's delivering what it's supposed to deliver in the best interest of those individuals, um, and that we're able to assess that to make sure that the outcomes actually are the right outcomes. So, it, I mean, that side of it absolutely will be there, but in terms of the timeline, um, yes, we'll come back. I will come back to you, and I will make sure we do that urgently. Can I, can I just ask one follow-up question, which is, um, I, I think this is a really, really big issue, and I've had a couple of cases, um, and and one that I had <laughs> last week was not actually about um, a. a um, uh, it, it was about a, a girl who was brought up in Jamaica, actually, so not a, um, it's a slightly different case, but she was brought up by her father who severely beat her and abused her for years and years and years and years, and she's now got um, lots of mental health problems, self-harms, you know, has a lot of um, evidence of the, the harm that her father has inflicted and the harm that she's inflicted on herself. And she had an interview with the Home Office about trying to stay here with her mother, and the Home Office interviewer was sort of asking her questions like, well, why would you be more likely to harm yourself in Jamaica than you would here? And all, all kinds of questions, but you just read it and you just think, oh, you need, you need a medical... You need someone who knows what they're talking about to be having those conversations, and I do, I do worry that the, the, the Home Office officials sort of take a view based on whatever they think, and they don't... Um, they, they don't look at what some of the medical evidence is, so I, I would just underline just and we'll want to look at that evidence available. We're we'll looking to it. Yes. Absolutely, I and mean, in case workers um, making clinical ju judgments which are actually beyond their qualifications, and then asking expert witnesses about their level of expertise and qualification, um, and the fact that we have 98% of cases where it's found um, that you know they're replacing expert opinion just shows the gravity of the concern um, here. So. Um, the feedback will be great. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.